My name is David Hurley. My name is Shakir Chambers. My name is Michael Hay. I formerly worked for Harper's Prime Minister's Office and for the Ontario government on Doug Ford's election campaign. I ran two national campaigns for the Liberal Party under the leadership of Paul Martin. In 2017, I was Jigmeet Singh's leadership campaign director. This election will be divisive. And the last one for at least two of the major party leaders. This election will be historic. Only one week to go in the 2019 federal election, and with no clear path to a majority anyway, all the parties are hoping politics is on the menu this Thanksgiving. The leaders' debates are over, the costed platforms released, and the advanced polls now open. So expect to hear a lot more of this in the coming week. I want to encourage everybody to get out and vote. So many of you are pulling late night and early morning. Knocking on doors. We're hearing from our candidates more and more volunteers are coming out to get the message out, to get the vote out. But with the race still so close, what are parties doing to get out the vote? And how will they use this final week to convince Canadians? So time to bring, it, bring in our Sunday War Room panel. David, Shakir, and Michael. Good to see everybody in person. I'm sorry I wasn't with you last <laughs> week. Um, I, I want to start, if I can, with something that Jagmeet Singh was asked today. Um, because obviously now a lot of the questions from journalists are turning towards uh, how, how will a minority government work? Who are you willing to work with? What are you willing to trade off? He was asked, um, would you be willing to form a coalition with the Liberals to stop the Conservatives? And he said, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll do whatever it takes to stop the Conservatives. So, so my question around that my, is, is that still okay? Is that okay to be saying already? Because he's still also saying, please vote for me. Um, so is, is it too early to have that conversation? I think he's saying. I think he's saying both. I think he's yeah. saying that he's running for prime minister, which all of us know that he's doing. He's run, his name is on the ballot for prime minister, and then he's also laid out his six priorities. We saw that this week. They they're prioritizing uh, uh, universal pharmacare, dental care, uh, waiving student debt. A bunch of other things. A whole yeah. bunch of things. Yeah. There's six. There's six of them, uh, and those are the priorities that they'll be pushing on, no matter what the election outcome. But do you think that sending those two messages at the same time runs the risk of confusing people? I guess is what I'm asking. No, I think it's just like a genuine. It's a genuine offer yeah. for Canadians so that they can know that they can go to the polls and they can vote for who they want. It's probably strategically uh, their own strategic messaging yes, yes. against the Liberals' message that's starting to come out this week, which is a, a message around a strategic vote, right. right? So Liberals are trying to convince Canadians not to vote for the party that they want, but to hold their nose and, and to vote for them and to settle for Liberals when all the other parties are trying to convince uh, people to go and vote for them. It, it's that whole strategic voting thing, and it's certainly a play that the Liberals have made in the past. If you vote for the NDP, you're going to end up with the Conservatives. Uh, does that work? Is this the right time for them to be doing that? What do, what do you make of that strategy? Uh, it, um, it needs to work. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it needs to work, and it, and it often does work, yeah. but here are the preconditions where it works. Where uh, the Conservatives are seen as potential or likely winners, so there's a threat of a Conservative government. So a real threat. A real threat right. of a Conservative right. government, and where uh, centre-left voters see the difference between the Conservatives and the Liberals as larger than the difference between the Liberals and the New Democrats okay. or the Liberals and the Greens. Okay. Okay? That and part would be true, maybe. Well, second part? I don't know. I mean, yeah. I think the Liberals, to be honest, have a job to convince people of that yeah. over the course of the over the course of the next week, right. and um, and it's probably more done, more, better done by emphasizing what people ought to be concerned about about right. Mr. Shear's potential government, uh, than trying to convince Green voters that the Liberal Party has a better environmental platform, for example. Okay. What do you think about that whole, like, even the talk around what a government might look like? I mean, it's partly our fault. We're the right. ones asking the questions right. and forcing the conversation. But it is important for Canadians to start considering what that would look like. And it's important for this conversation around strategic voting, which I think a lot of people are confused about, you know? Yeah, well, listen, strategically, as we all know, if the NDP does very well, Conservatives are going to probably do pretty well, right? So I think we would encourage the NDP to do well, people to cast votes <laughs> for Jack and Senator, right? It ends up pretty well for us. I think if you're looking at a minority situation, there it really is no obvious like partner for the Conservative Party. Yeah. Uh, we spoke in weeks ago about a Green NDP or a, a Liberals, kind of whatever they want to form there. But for the Conservatives, very hard to see how you govern unless you get a majority government. So I think we want the NDP to do well so we can just kind of slide up the middle and, and form government. I do want to say, though, that I... I don't think that a majority government is in the cards for the Conservatives. They're not polling well enough right now to actually gain the 80 seats 
that they would need 75 seats mm -hmm. that they would need across the country. That's almost doubling that's the on, seats on top of what they that have, they have yeah. right yeah. now. Yeah, they have about 95 seats right now. They need to almost double that to get a majority. So a rise in the NDP, I don't think, actually helps the Conservatives that much. In fact, as the NDP has been rising in the polls, the Conservatives have been coming down in the polls. So in many ways, the NDP may be eating up the alternative to Trudeau vote in different parts of the country because regionally things are very different. I, I'm not sure I agree with that. What, what do you think? Well, I'm, I think it is obviously the case mathematically that a rising vote on the left of the Liberal Party um, creates more chances that the Conservatives yes. win seats because yeah. it splits votes. Yeah. Uh, in some cases, the NDP will be in a position to win seats, but in other cases, they will look just be uh, splitting the vote, which uh, creates a greater prospect uh, of a Conservative government. Now, one thing that has changed, Shakir, since we first started talking about this, is the emergence of the bloc yeah, as a likely absolutely. real presence. And so at the start of this campaign, when I talked about how the Conservatives had to win a majority to govern, because I didn't see how they could cobble together a government otherwise, if the bloc wins 40, 45 seats, that is a potential dance partner. Right. Yeah, because right. they're say, they're only saying, mm. as a caveat, we have, uh, our priority is Quebec, we want Quebec things, we'll talk to whoever will give us that. That's That's possible it's the conservatives right yeah the, the rise of the block changes the game for sure right um it, it just creates new possibilities for governance um and i would also say well, maybe what two weeks ago when the liberals had a, a large majority of seats in quebec we kind of looked at the, the the seat count and the liberals are winning by a lot with the block now rising seat counts are pretty even between the conservatives and the liberals so again you want to form a coalition with the block what are you willing to give up in, in that particular yeah of course the risk of forming any sort of formal coalition with a separatist party is is fraught i think i, I, I would say that there is i don't even think there would be a coalition no, in this government, right? So like, what would you be willing to give yeah. on policy issues versus yeah. what would you be able to take away off of the Okay, let, let's put all those hypotheticals away for a minute and talk about what, what has to happen over the next week. Because uh, while it is true that the, the NDP has, has come up, the bloc has come up, uh, the Liberals and the Conservatives are sort of bouncing around, still around the same space. So what does each party um, need to do? Why don't you start sort of the, well, talk I think about the, the Liberals or whoever you want, but yeah. Um, well, I, I think that... Every party is rethinking their strategy for the final week right now because the last week has thrown, I think, a lot of assumptions up in the air for people. Yep. And so the NDP are now thinking of a much bigger push, I'm sure, in the last week than they would have been contemplating maybe at the beginning. Right. The Greens, on the other hand, probably have to retreat to Vancouver Island and try to see what That's they exactly can... That's exactly what she's doing, yeah. Just yeah. Try to see what they can save out of there. I mean, I think the task for the Liberal Party is pretty clear. It needs to galvanize the left, the center left of the country uh, behind Mr. Trudeau again, the way it was in 2015. Yeah. And I, I think that um, in order to do that, they're going to have to spend the rest of this week uh, dramatizing um, the consequences of a sheer government. Uh, and I, I would likely, if I was them, I would play off of the uh, platform and the unspecified cuts and the link to Ford mm -hmm. and all that. But I think that's really where it has to go, is they've got to make people who are thinking about an NDP vote or thinking about a Green vote say, actually, I can't take the risk of a sheer victory. It's mm -hmm. too consequential. What, what does the NDP do? I, I, I agree. I think they're looking for ways to sort of up the momentum a bit and probably are changing what their plans were for this last week. And yeah. So, yeah. Well, I think all the campaigns will be rallying across the country. We'll be seeing that. And then Canadians will be having more people knock on their doors and phone them to get out their vote. Yeah. And, and so the NDP has to make... The, like turn the momentum that they've they've built over the last week. They have to turn that into actual votes. And do you so think there's enough time for that? Because I wondered whether this hadn't happened a little too late. Because um, we're not seeing it. We're seeing it some in some of Jagmeet Singh's favorables, but not necessarily in wide swaths of the voting population. So I wonder if maybe he's run out of time to change the momentum into votes. Yeah, I think only time will tell. We'll yeah. only know that after the election. But I like personally, I think that the timing was as pretty much as good as it gets. Mm. The Greens peak too early in yeah. this election, so yeah. we can see what too early looks like, and then we can test out what, what peaking last week later. looks yeah. like for Jagmeet. <laughs> but I, I, think, I think that you know, the, um, the polling has shown that the youth vote is where Jagmeet's best vote is. Yeah. You know, up to 40% of young people are supporting Jagmeet. He's, he's leading in those polls. And then we've actually seen that uh, voter turnout on campuses. Last week, Elections Canada put out those re mm -hmm. results, is double what it was in 2015. And in 2015, that's when we saw a surge in youth vote. Yeah. So those those trends look good for the NDP. We yeah. won't really know what they mean yeah. in, until 
until Although the, ca the campus vote was also bigger because it was open for f more days, so it, th that's part of it. Um, yeah. And I would also say young people, the efficiency of their vote obviously is not as reliable as older people. Um, what, what, do you, what do you expect to see? Uh, if you're the Conservatives, I think the biggest thing is you just need to remind voters of why they need to vote for you and against, again, the Liberal government, right? So you're going to probably see themes of, again, the SNC stuff. You're going to probably see themes of, for the West Coast voters, fair to build pipelines, and then generally speaking, the higher cost of living in Canada, and that kind of pushed Shear's message forward as a centre is that affordability is the issue here and we can help address affordability issues. I don't think their message or their, 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 their strategy changes that dramatically, right? What, what, does where they go change, do you think? Because now it's about, you know, seat-rich areas as opposed right. to I Western think Canada. For ultimately, uh, there's, if the, the Conservatives do not do well in the 905, there's no path to victory. They're going to focus on Ontario, they're going to focus on the 905 area, and they're going to try to drive that vote to get those victories in those key writings. What, what about the Liberals? Same thing? I mean, he was all over the 905 today, Andrew Scheer took a day off. Well deserved, no comment, no <laughs> criticism, but um, is, that, is that where the Liberals have to be too? Well, I think they have more battlegrounds um, than the Conservatives do. Uh, so I think, yes, the 905, and you saw Mr. Trudeau going through yep. the 905 uh, this weekend and holding rallies, but they're in a battle in Quebec. I mean, frankly, the other parties are no longer in a battle in Quebec, but the Liberals are in a big fight mm -hmm. in Quebec with a lot of seats on the line with the Bloc, and there remain a lot of seats in play in British Columbia. Um, a lot of seats in play in British Columbia. And in an election this close, that's very important. So I would certainly expect to see the Liberals back in British Columbia again oh, before, really? before the election is out too. Okay, mm. all right, so this is it. <laughs> We're gonna talk, it'll be the night before next week. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you all.